Now I want to start talking about this electroosmotic solution in the context of the electrokinetic coupling matrix. <clears throat> and I want to start creating a framework for how we think of ourselves as taking simple problems and putting them together so that we can treat them in a more complicated form. This is all motivated by the fact that a subset of these problems are linear, and because they're linear, they allow for superposition, they allow for matrix solution. So we want to start putting together the electrokinetic coupling matrix, and we want to start adding in the effect of electroosmosis. And I want to write the electrokinetic coupling matrix in this form. So this is a two by two linear equation that relates in some channel the area, av area averaged volumetric flux and the area averaged current to the pressure gradient in this channel and the electrical potential gradient in this channel. And a lot of these components can have different symbols. So I can write capital I over A. This is really the current density. So I write the current density with a lowercase i. And because this is averaged across, I would denote this with a bar. So I can write I over A, or I can write it as I bar. Similarly, the averaged volumetric flux divided by the area is equal to It's the average velocity, right? So this is average velocity. And so I could write that as u bar. This is the opposite of the gradient of the electrical potential. What's minus the gradient of the electrical potential? Right, this is given by the electric field. I have a subscript n on these gradients, and it really implies that I'm looking at the component of the gradient along the channel. And so this is an electric field, but it's really the component of the electric field along the channel. So I can write that as E sub n. Similarly, this is the pressure gradient along the channel axis. <clears throat> and so I could write this as a derivative, a partial derivative of pressure in a direction that denotes the, the channel axis. Uh, I could write it as grad NP. You'll find in the text I always write this as dp dx. I'm basically just uh, assuming in this case that the channel is aligned in the x direction. This notation is a bit more general. Now, this electrokinetic coupling matrix has four different relations that provide linear relations between these averaged flux values and these average field gradient values. This chi 1, 1 is the relation between the average velocity and the pressure gradient. And so this can be solved by solving the Stokes equations for transport in a channel. And in fact, we've already done this. If we assume that our channel has a circular cross section, then the multiplicative factor that relates this pressure gradient to the average velocity is given by r squared over 8 eta. And we can generalize this. to a channel of a uh, different cross-section by using the hydraulic radius.
So this is an approximate relation that's true for any channel that's not too far from being circular. Similarly, we talked earlier in the term about the fact that this parameter here, which relates the current density to the electric field, is given by This is the electrical conductivity, which I'll denote as sigma. <clears throat> so now what we want to do, and these were things that we could have done before we started talking about electroosmosis. But now we want to take what we've gotten from electroosmosis, and I'll plug it into this framework. So if I have determined what the magnitude of the electroosmotic flow is, where will it go into this matrix? Right, it's going to go into chi 1, 2. This chi 1, 2, so I call this electrokinetic ma coupling matrix chi, but I'm the only person who calls it chi, so uh, you know, don't attach any particular importance to that. Chi 1, 2 is what I, uh, the contribution to Q over A that I get because of the electric field. Right? So as written, this electrokinetic coupling matrix says that my mean velocity is given by this magnitude times the pressure gradient plus this times the electric field. So chi 1, 2 is going to be the thing that tells me, how do I get extra flow from the electric field in addition to what I already know that I get from a pressure gradient? So let's suppose I have a tube. I have thin electrical double layers on the outside with a uniform phi naught. What should my chi 1, 2 be? Help me out. Give me a, like a warm or cold or this 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 one right here, right? I mean, this basically is just saying that my velocity in the bulk, which if I have a uniform phi naught, is basically uniform, right? We said that we have a a a, a plug flow of velocity that's generated by electroosmosis, so that flow is also equal to the average velocity. So my average velocity is basically equal to this electroosmotic mobility times the intrinsic electric field. Now, we have not yet shown what chi 2 1 is, but we'll be able to do that. And once we have all these components, this now basically is a complete description of the electrokinetic response of the system in the appropriate limits. This has assumed that our channel is close enough to circular in cross section so that I can use a hydraulic radius. This has assumed that I have a thin electrical double layer. We haven't gotten into it. In fact, the assumptions I have to make to be able to use this are pretty extreme. I have to assume that my electrical double layer is not only thin, but it doesn't have too much extra uh, ionic conductivity. I also have to assume that I don't get extra conductivity associated with the flow associated with electroosmosis. And we'll talk about all these things. So we're starting to put together an expression here that's very useful, but we also need to be aware that it has a lot of assumptions that have been applied to make it very simple for the moment. Now, as we've done things so far, we took very simple cases, right? When we derived Purcell flow, I didn't talk about electric field at all. I didn't talk about current. I took an isolated system where this was equal to 0. And I asked, what was the flow? And in so doing, I got this parameter. And then I took another problem. I said, OK, let's assume that the pressure is, uh, sorry. When I derived this, I said that the electric field was 0. I applied a pressure. And I calculated my velocity. That told me what this matrix component was. Then I took another case where I assumed that this pressure gradient was 0, but that I had an electric field, calculated out the flow. That got me this. You can imagine that when we go to derive this, we will assume that we have a pressure, but that we have no electric field. We'll calculate what the current density is. And that will give us this chi 2, 1. 
But just because we considered systems in isolation when we calculated out what these components are doesn't mean that this can't then be applied to systems that have a lot of stuff going on.